Because you had that blessed assurance that our God, the Almighty, He reigns. He will not allow a hair of your head to perish. That's what He says, not a hair of your head. He has everything under control, even when you have nothing under control. And isn't that good, good news? Good, good news. 
So now, Lord, we come to you because <laughs> some of us have already run into obstacles this morning that were unexpected and, and things maybe were a little rocky when we woke up and maybe we've seen news that is not, is where, that makes us scared or afraid. But, oh, God, you say to us now, do not be afraid. Fear not. These are your words to us. Fear not. I will let nothing harm you. And so now, Lord, we will take a deep breath. A deep breath. We want to breathe in you, Holy Spirit. We want to breathe in your power. We want to breathe in your healing. We want to breathe in your presence. We want to breathe in your peace. So Holy Spirit, reign now. Reign on us and fill us and help us to be all that you need us to be. But most of all, O oh Lord, O oh Holy Spirit, minister, revive, strengthen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, God's word says hold on to the promises of God. Amen? amen. Well, that was really low. Are you going to hold on? Oops. We're hold on till we pray. Together. Well, hold on till you pray. Amen yeah. for that. Yeah. I'll pray for you. James 5.18 says, Confess your faults to one another and pray for one another Amen. that ye may be healed. You, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Jesus. I'll pray for you. Why don't you stand to your feet and hold each other's hands? Why don't you just commit this week to pray for the person at the hand that you're holding. I'll pray for you. other this week lift up each other there's so many things that are going on 
even in our pastor's life, the people who lead us, remember, I hope you have them on your prayer list. Just lift them up. You know, they're fighting the battles for our church, so we praise the Lord for them. Back, back to hold on to you bless me, amen? amen. We're going to hold on to God's word to believe that what he's promised, he yes, will do. Yes, Amen? Yes, 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 Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Begin yes, to Lord. praise Thank him. You, Lord. Give him honor. Lord. Give him glory. Lord. Give him praise. Yeah. is for the appointed time. It hastens toward the goal. It will not fail. Go it tarries. Wait for it. For it will surely come. It will not delay. Hallelujah. Just like Jacob, I will wrestle. I'll hold on tight to your promise, O oh Lord. You have promised me your blessing will come to pass over this side of your team hold on hold on till you bless me okay what a wonderful morning it is very quickly just to let you know I knew this event was coming if any of you had trouble getting in the parking lot um, and that's and I did talk to the lady at the library she assured me they would let us park there today 
but somehow the ball got dropped. Happens, we are all about mercy and grace, right? Here at church and modeling that no matter what. So what I did was I actually went in and found the head of the entire organ, um, event, had a wonderful little chat with her, and I believe in being church and being like Christ, even though inside it was like, ah, how could you do this to us? But at any rate, um, they were very wonderful, they were very kind, and they said, yes, we could park there, but... We need to be, every single last car has to be out of there by 1130. So even if we're in the middle of our song at 1115, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to say to all of you, I'm going to grab the mic, even if it's away from Debbie today, and I'm going to say, hello, I love you, go take church with you. And I told them that's what we were going to do. And they said, well, what's the name of your church? So that's what we're doing. Okay, very quickly. Um, and now I want to read you some scripture and get into the rest of our announcements. So at 11.15, if you see me, I just wanted to give you all a heads up, all right? And anybody who comes in a little late, you can tell them. Sheila really, truly is trying her best. Psalm 37. This is one of my favorite psalms. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass. They will wither like the green herb. Verse 3 says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Verse 4, this is my life verse, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Verse 5 says, commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. Verse 6 says, he will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice, justice as the noonday. Verse 7 says, be still before the Lord. Wait patiently for him. And that's our, that's our scripture for today. May the Lord bless the reading of his beautiful, beautiful beautiful word. So in a moment, we will be taking our tithes and morning offerings. I hope you'll get yours ready. I have mine ready here. Um, tithing, always tithing because God will bless you. And it's a chance for you to see God at work in your life. So we want to get ready those tithes and offerings. And I want you all now, all the ladies, if you'll just give me your undivided attention. Sorry, men, you can listen, but you're not invited. But if you know a lady that you'd like to share the good news with, be my guest. But ladies, save the date. It's a ways away, but not that far. March 3 through 5. March 3 through 5. That's a Friday night and a Saturday night, all day Saturday, and then Sunday morning. All the ladies in this church, I'm hoping all of you will be able to come. Church is going to end up being kind of a guys-only church that morning because we ladies are going to go on a spiritual retreat. And we've never done this before, but there's, it's an amazing opportunity to go and just take time away from the busyness of the world. Take time away from all that is pressing on you and be alone with God for an extended period of time. And it is just the right amount of time. So we will, it'll start on Friday night and it'll end Sunday morning. We'll, come, we'll leave and be back around noon, to two, 1 to 2, somewhere in there on Sunday, maybe earlier if you need to. And if you can't do Friday night, you can always come up Sunday morning, uh, Saturday morning rather. You can always do that. So we want to encourage as many as possible because it's going to be a powerful, powerful spiritual retreat. It's going to be at Camp Alpine which is my spiritual home. That's where I made my decision to follow Jesus Christ and get, make him the Lord of my life. So it's very special to me. It's in Blue Jay near Lake Arrowhead. So it's a beautiful place. And the cost is, I was afraid to do this whole thing because I was afraid of, of the cost, but it's $133 each. And that includes both nights and all meals, five meals, which is really reasonable, right? 
We're volunteering everything else, so we figure that's less than $40, a, uh, what's about $40 a month for the next few months, and or $10 a week. And if, you, if the cost is still prohibitive to you, let us know, and we will pray about getting some scholarship to help you. So don't let that stop you. Save the date, March 3. That's the first Sunday in March, March 3 through 5. And we wanna, I want all of you to be able to go, if you possibly can, talk to your bosses about taking the time off, whatever you need to do. Make sure this is going to be a blessed, blessed, blessed time with the Lord. And then I'm sure the men will probably want to do something like that later down the road. But for now, we're starting. We women are going to do that. So the second announcement I want to make very quickly, because I'm watching that clock, is that we are Sherry. Stand up, Sherry. Everybody turn around take a look at Sherry. Because Sherry, you know, we were, pray we were fasting and praying for more workers. And um, Sher God brought Sherry right during that. We said, Sherry, God brought you. And the reason he brought her is because she's actually, she comes to church after she's already ministered at her own little um, church for homeless people right down the road here every Sunday. And so Sherry is, has agreed to help give leadership in our missions here at Hope Center of Christ. So what we're doing is we're starting immediately a drive because we like to do that. We like to actually, and so we can give money to missions and things like that, but I think there's, there's something in addition to that. It's really good for us individually to actually do something, you know, like the chili van and other things. And what we want you to do now is buy underwear, socks, and depends. Depends are those women's um, diapers, right? So socks, underwear, and depends. And why depends? Because Willie Jordan at the Fred Jordan Mission, she told me, Sheila, that's one of the biggest needs for women that are living on the street. They don't have access to bathrooms in the middle of the night. And that's how they, it, it's really kind of sad to think about, really, truly, right? Makes you appreciate what you have. But they need that. And so these are, un this is underwear, socks, and depends for homeless. And so, and that's what, sh and Sherry, who knows their needs too, is helping us do that. So that, I want you to, yes, Sherry. What magnificent church she will be on because the box is full of this is first day. We only made one announcement last Sunday. And did you hear her? One announcement, the box is already full. Well, let's fill it again and again and again and again. Keep filling it again and again and again and again, okay? All right, that's a challenge. So next week, let's fill it again. And the week after, let's fill it again. Why not? Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. We couldn't do it without you. You're a gift, and God did bring you to us when we needed you. So now we will pray, and we will... Oh. Thank you, Susan. She's helping me. Susan helped so much. She got those, those wonderful maps for you for extra parking at the last minute. And, um, but she's reminding me, don't forget to do your connection cards, okay? If you haven't done it, we need it. please do it. So, And let us pray now for our tithes and offerings. Lord God Almighty, we are so grateful for you, so much that you've given to us. We just want to give back. We want to be used by you. We want to help those who are hurting around you. You've said, find a need and fill it. And so we have found a need. You're helping us to fill it. We want to fill it again and again and again. We want to be used. We want to be used so much that it's, we just, the more we're used, the more we want to be used. So Lord, ask a lot of us. Please, we want that for your sake, for your kingdom, because, oh, how much you have given us. You have blessed us. You have given us. Yes, Lord. So now accept these tithes and offerings and use them to build your kingdom. Amen. Amen. Psalms 119.10 says, With my whole heart have I sought thee. Hallelujah. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments, Lord. 
and make this the call, the cry of your heart, that we can serve the Lord with our whole
Thank you, thank you. Let's hear it for our worship team. Come on, we can do better. Amen. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Give God the glory. It's so nice because I know I'm sitting or standing here in the front of a lot of believers in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, I know Pastor Sheila just did the announcements. Uh, but today we're going to talk about being in his presence, in the presence of Almighty God. And when you get there, there's always someone or something that comes to your mind that uh, needs prayer. And so I would ask that you would pray for our worship team. And we've, we are still waiting for our CD, right folks? We're still waiting for our CD so everyone else can enjoy this wonderful music that we enjoy every Sunday. Uh, we don't have some of the worship team members with us today. Carmel is on her way to Germany. Keep her up in prayer. Uh, Blake, what, P.J. Blake. I was watching Juice TV last night, and Blake showed up. And so I said, wow, these are people that usually minister to us. So they need prayer as well. And then I asked Joel if he would do the last song for me today because it is such a blessing when he sings that song. It's such a blessing, and I know he aspires to serve the Lord in his personal life. So when, when, when we're in the presence of the Lord, let's remember, let's remember some of those people that we know that have spent their time letting us usher in the spirit of Almighty God. And then we have Rebecca from Canada. I don't go to Facebook often, but I go to Facebook and already, she's only been here probably about three weeks, and she's already over at the Dream Center ministering over there the kids on the adopt a block, so I'd like to hear it for her as well, right? And then about two months ago, I had an opportunity to go and see an Al Green concert. Al Green wasn't, Al Green wasn't revived to life, of course, and he's out in this secular world, but our friend DeMille was playing the character of Al Green. And I said, DeMille, you know what an honor this is that you're playing the character of Al Green? And I don't think he really fully realized that uh, even God, even Jesus Christ sat in the seat where there were tax collectors that did not know about the word. And with DeMille being there playing Al Green, he had an opportunity to also to minister to those that was helping him to put on the performance. And so I like to thank these young people that's in our midst for the way that they are going out and sharing the word of God. Now, you know, we are in one of the greatest nations in the world. And yes, Lord, let's bow our heads and pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you humbly, not because of what we've done, but because of what your son, Jesus Christ, did on the cross at Calvary for our sakes, dear Heavenly Father. He took away our sins. He redeemed us, dear Heavenly Father. He saved us from ourselves and from the enemy, Satan, dear Heavenly Father, and Satan demons. And he's given us this opportunity to come before you in prayer, dear Heavenly Father. And he intercedes for us, dear Heavenly Father, so that uh, our prayers will be answered. He said that I, he's going to leave, dear Heavenly Father, but he sent us a helper. He sent us his very own 
newborn spirit that house us, dear Heavenly Father. And we are honored and we praise your name, dear Heavenly Father, for the love that you've shown to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. And dear God, as we listen to your word today, may that word uh, uh, just bring a joy to your heart, dear Heavenly Father. And may we be filled with an unexpected joy that we knew not that we were going to receive today. And may we be freed, dear Heavenly Father, from any bondage, any bondage that may be holding us. Dear God, we give you all glory, honor, and praises in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. Amen. I was told that Pastor Sheila had house guests this weekend, uh, somebody named Clementine and Darla. I'm sure we don't know who they are, right? <laughs> but those are grandbabies, and, and what a wonderful thing to have your grandbabies visit you, right? So we're going to be talking about today in his presence, in his presence. A lot of us, when we begin our prayer to the Lord, uh, maybe not you, but sometimes we forget. We don't just uh, bow our heads and begin to and just begin to wrap off things to the Lord. We should try and create an environment where we know that we're in his presence. We can do that by glorifying his name, by song, by reading scripture, or just getting our bodies and our minds still before we go to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now, I got a question for you. Is an atomic bomb powerful? Oh, that's what we think. What about a Colt 45? I don't mean the liquor. I mean the gun. Is that powerful? Is it powerful? It's powerful, right? It's very powerful. But there's one power that we all have access to, and that is the power of prayer. That is the power of prayer. If you've heard me speak about the power of prayer before, oh, okay, you did. But we're going to continue speaking about the power of prayer until we begin to exercise that power and see what type of power we do have. Proverbs I think it's Proverbs 18, 21. Let me see if I can get this Kindle up. The pastor and I have been having problems with our little electronic gadgets. But I tell you what, with the lighting in here, they are really save you, don't they? Because it brings its own lighting. But when we look at uh, Proverbs 18, verses 20 to 21, it says, from the fruit of their mouth... A person's stomach is filled. With the harvest of their lips, they are satisfied. The tongue, listen to this, the tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Eat its fruit. And so the, the word today is based on that. You have the power of life and death. God has given you that power, the power of life and death. Now, we know that uh, in this world, we're just in this world if we're believers. If some of you are not believers, may I encourage you to come on in. The water is good. It's living water that Almighty God has given to us. So if you are a believer, if you are a believer, guess what? You have been saved by grace. Your sins have been forgiven. Some of us keep picking them up, but our sins have been forgiven. Amen? Amen? Amen. Look, we have the ability as children of God, we have the ability, uh, the ability and the right to stand on and stand in the presence of God. That is awesome. You see, God, let's see, uh, Legos, Logos. Logos is word, right? And Logos is word. So when we look at the scripture, we're looking dead smack in the face of God. How do I know that? Because John 1 says he was with God in the beginning. He was the word and the word, the word was God. So when we fail to pick up all the scripture, we fail to go right to the throne, right to the kingdom of God because he is the word. That is the way he speaks to us. He talks to us. If we want to know what God thinks about us, his word, his presence is speaking to 
to us. So let's not forget that, right? We can be in his presence. We have a legal right because of the crucifixion on the cross. Jesus Christ gave us that right. Let's dial back the clock a minute. And we go to the Old Testament and we see Adam. Adam was created in God's image, correct? Being created in God, God's image, God gave him the authority in this world. Gave Adam the authority in this world. But what happened? What happened? He decided, Adam decides that, hmm, I think I'd rather have that piece of fruit than to have the authority that God has given me. Yeah, wow is what happened. And so we lost that authority as men and women, and we walked lonely, we walked separated, we walked in darkness away from Almighty God, and, and God always was hungry, hungry for the return of his children to him. With my whole heart, I sought the Lord, is what our worship team just sang. But can you imagine this? With God's whole heart, he sought us and continued to seek us, continued to seek us. And he did. He, he finally got us. And thank you, Jesus. And how did he get us? Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, that authority that we gave away was now reestablished back to us because of the shed blood of Jesus. Amen. So now we have authority in this earth. Satan, however, Satan, that old reluctant dude, that thief, that liar, that decides that he's not going to go away peacefully, gets into your spirit, gets into your mind, gets into your life, and make you think that you don't have any authority. And you will believe that you don't have authority as long as you don't seek out the logos, as long as you don't seek out the word. As long as you don't put yourself in the presence of God, guess what? Satan will kick you. Satan will keep his foot in your neck. I can't get an amen, can I? Amen. That helps a brother. Prayer is a call for us. Prayer is a call for us to visit with God. It's a call for us. Prayer is love as we talk and commune with the Father. Commune with him. Listen to this. God's wait, God waits for us to come to him in prayer. He loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son. We are welcome to the throne room of God because of the cross and the victory that Christ has given us. When we pray, it is like a son, a grandchild, a daughter visiting a father or children coming to, into the presence of a loving parent. And Matthews eleven twenty eight says, Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and, and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke, he says. Let me teach you. Because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden that I give you is light. That is in the word of God. That is the word speaking to us. That is Jesus speaking to us. Knock, 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 knock. Is anybody listening? That is the word. Jesus is speaking to us through his word. We have an invitation to come to the Lord. Our prayer is God's living word that he hold, that we can hold up to him. It's a living word. Let's see, a living word that we can hold up to God. We're struggling with whatever issue we may be struggling with. And the word of God said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So you're praying and your difficulty, your wall, your struggle may not be going away. So you take that word and say, look, you said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
You said that you shall supply all my needs. God, you said that if I seek you, I will find you. You said that, dear Lord, no weapons formed against me shall prosper. So when you know God's word, then you hold God's word before him, before him before him and he will honor you because he said he would honor you. Amen? Amen? So let's not live without the word. God said that he would do whatever. God will see himself in his word as you ask him anything in prayer. So when you're holding it up, he's seeing himself. You're seeing God in your prayer. Hold the promise up to him in prayer. Be assured that your prayers would be answered because God and his word is one just. It's one in justice. And God and Jesus Christ is one. In the beginning was the word. We've already established that. And that is Jesus Christ. So when we pray, let's get in the habit of quoting and speaking God's word. The scripture is the word of God, and it is how we speak with him. You probably have heard that 50 times since I've been up here. God is the word, and when we speak to him with the word, we're in communion with him. We're letting him know what the desires on our hearts may be. Okay, I hear the critic. I hear him already. The critic is saying, well, I prayed, and I prayed in his word, and I don't see nothing yet. Well, I'm glad you came here today because God answers all prayers. And once you pray, if you feel like you want to say, Lord, you know, I prayed yesterday. I don't see it today, Lord. No, 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 no. Thank you, Lord, that I've already received. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. I know for a fact that you heard my prayer. Thank you in faith, dear Heavenly Father. I know it's on my way, or it probably was on its way and got here, and I did not recognize your answer. But you do answer prayer, God, and I stand on that prayer. I stand on that answer. Amen? Amen. Bring all your needs to God. Activate. Activate his promise. Activate it. Christ taught us how to pray and how to trust his word. He wants us to depend on him to do what he said. We are encouraged by Christ to act on God's word. But if we never act, oh, Lord, have mercy. How do we want God to respond if we never act? Listen to this. This is Mark 5, 25. It says, a woman in the crowd had suffered from 12 years with a constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors, and over the years, she had spent everything she had to pay them. But she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. Does that sound like some of you? Well, be honest, it'll set you free. She had heard about Jesus, however. So she came up behind him through the crowd, and she touched his robe. She thought to herself, if I can touch his robe, I will be healed. We call that belief. We call that belief. She said, if I can touch his robe, I can be healed. She never had experienced any healing from the Lord thus far, but she believed that if she touched uh, his garment, she would be healed. Immediately the bleeding stopped and she could feel in her body that she had been healed uh, of her terrible condition. Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out from him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched me? His disciples said to him, look at this crowd passing around you. How can you ask who touched me? They're ridiculing him right now. They are sort of like, really? Really? Somebody touched you? 
Look at all these people in Hope Center of Christ. Duh. But Jesus kept on looking, looking around. That's the way God is. He keeps looking. He keeps looking because he keeps knowing. And he keeps looking. Then the frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and told him what she had done. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. You see, Christ wants us to come to him. He wants us to have that belief that he answers his prayer. And once, you, once she touched him, bam! Her belief was that if I touch it, I will be healed. Then she realized her faith was strengthened because of her belief. And so her faith caused her to have that healing. What are you believing God for? Are you willing to wait in faith that it will be answered? See, we want to become filled with God's word or with the words of God. And the only way we can do it is by meditating on God's word, by memorizing verses. But be aware that God is spirit. And when we pray, our spirit is communicating with the spirit of God. And my timing is getting real short, real fast. But I could go on and on talking about the power of almighty God. God rules through us, folks. We can even be, and I'm going to stand boldly and say this, because God, Christ has given us the victory over life and death. And Satan, are you listening to this? He has given us rule over Satan. Oh, I just get a weak amen. You're going to continue allowing Satan to keep his foot in your throat. When you can rule over Satan by the words that come out of your mouth. By the way you seek the king of king and the lord of lords. You do not have to be ruled by Satan. You can rule him. Think about this. Ephesians says, put on the sword which is the word of God. The sword is the word of God. The sword. I told the guys in my Bible study, if this was Jesus, say if this was Jesus, right? And Ephesians said, take up the word, and we've already established that in the beginning was the word, the word was God, and the word was with God, and we know that that word is whom they're speaking of. So if the sword of the spirit is the word, is Jesus, then we can overcome Satan by the word. By the word. By the word. We can overcome Satan. We are victorious over Satan. We have to learn that. Put on salvation as your helmet and take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Let God's words stay on your lips 24-7. He said, never seek praying. Never seek. Of course, in our society, we think we got to, okay, we got to find a nice quiet room where the music isn't blasting or the TV isn't blasting and uh, say our prayers. Christ never said that. He said, pray without ceasing. I can, Lord, I wish that music would stop. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for listening to my prayer. Dear God, I know that circumstance that just came into my head that would stress me out. I'm putting it into your hands, dear Father. I know that it's all taken care of. I'm driving down, my, driving down the freeway. Somebody cut across in front of me. Instead of giving, my, giving them an elbow, you said, Lord, thank you for blessing me that I didn't get all I rate and throw up the elbow, right? So you see, we can always pray without ceasing. Amen? Amen. Then the church... The church, the church, the church, the church. 
Remember, it said the church, not the pastors, but we are part of the church. But the church, you have been given authority over demonic devices. Our world is suffering because the church is not standing in its role that it's supposed to be. We're supposed to pray for this world. We're supposed to pray for those knuckleheads in Illinois that killing each other by the dozen. We're supposed to pray for our leadership, whether we like it or not. We're supposed to pray. We're supposed to pray instead of, oh, look at that, look at that. Oh, I'm so afraid. Oh, what's wrong with those people? No, 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 no. The church, we have to pray. We have to pray. Amen. Amen. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Somebody knows. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. But we must know how to use prayer in God's word. We need everyone who profess to be a Christian and a part of the church in order to wage a good fight. Don't stay out of the will of God. Get into the will of God. You must protect yourself by standing in his will. One day Jesus told his disciples a story uh, to show how they should always pray and never give up. You come back some other Sunday and I'll tell you what he said. <laughs> always take time to be with God in prayer. Don't allow yourself to be defeated by not praying. Pray without ceasing. You can have whatever you say. God is interested in everything that touches our lives. And he has made provisions for us. Let's look at John 1, 3 John 1. It says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. In what kind of things? God wants us to prosper in all all things and he wants us to be in good health did he say poor health what kind of health good health he wants us to prosper in all things he wants us to be in good health just as our soul prospers believe in your heart believe and in God's words and then in concluding Romans 12 verses 1 it says and so, dear brothers and sisters, this is the word I'm reading. And who is the word? God, God Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Or oh, we can say the Trinity and cover it all in once, right? So it's speaking and it says, and dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Okay, let me break this down for a minute. Let me break this down for a quick minute. I think I got a quick minute. All right. When we gave the authority over to Satan back in the garden, we began to operate in a nature which was not God's nature, and we call it what? Human nature or working in man's nature, right? And so now Christ is talking to us through his word, and he talks about body. What body is he talking about? He's talking about our new bodies that we received when we first believed in Jesus Christ. And so our new body is now a spiritual body, a spiritual body that Christ has given us the authority to exercise. And so let's go to him in that spiritual body. Forget about that natural man. That natural man is what got us in trouble in the first place. We have been atoned for. We have been redeemed. We have been saved by grace. We have been saved by the blood of Jesus. So we go to God with that new body, and he promised us health, long life, and a blessing in all things. Okay, get back to the text. It says, let them be a living and holy sacrifice. He wants your body and my body to be a holy and living sacrifice. Here I am, Lord. Use me. Use me. Use me. Use all of me. 
Use every inch of me. Use the thoughts of my mind. Use the words of my mouth. Use the eyes that's in my head. Use my ears, Lord. Use my feet. But use all of me. I give you everything. Everything. He gave us everything. We have nothing to lose with the stuff we use when we're doing it with Jesus Christ as leadership. Let them, let your bodies be a living sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is, the, this is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of the world. And you know we find ourselves uh, uh, trying to do what the world says is successful. We're trying to do what the world says is good. We're trying to do what the world says is going to get your head. We're trying to do all of those things. When we're doing that, we're working from our human nature, from the nature of corrupt man. God says, cut it out. Stop it. Stop it. Give me your whole heart. Give it to me. So don't copy the behavior and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Amen? Amen? Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. God's will for you is good, it's pleasing and perfect. I got a minute. Let me share something with you. Because I too work in the secular realm, and so I know, I know how they work. I really do. Now some of you are in sales. Some of you are in these companies, they always say, well, you got to affirm your greatness. In my, in my field, if you're a salesperson, I'm a great salesperson, I'm a great salesperson, I'm a great salesperson, then you're supposed to go out the door and sell everything, right? Or then if you have a self-esteem problem, you say, I like myself. I like myself. I like myself. And all of a sudden you have a, now you're walking a different walk. Supposedly, that's what the world says to you. Listen to the affirmation that God gives you. He said, this is the day that I have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Listen to this one. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Listen to this one. Let the weak say I am strong. Oh Lord have mercy. He didn't say let the strong say I'm strong. He said let the weak say I am strong. And why is the weak strong? The weak is strong because they've given them their whole selves to almighty God, right? Lord, have mercy. God is good. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Lord, if God be for us, who can be against us? Lord, have mercy. It says, my God, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Lord, have mercy. The anointing of the Holy One abides within me. Oh, Lord, I got one more here for you. Listen to this. Oh, Lord, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I cast all my cares on him because he cares for me. Amen. I feel healthy. I feel happy. I feel terrific. The Lord is the strength of my life. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us an opportunity to be in your presence. What a wonderful gift you've given us. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you so very much. Thank you, dear Jesus, for the word. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And dear Heavenly Father, anyone that's here today, that has been praying to you for whatever reasons. We pray, dear God, that you will provide them with a healing. We pray that you will fulfill any financial obligations 
they have, dear Heavenly Father, if they need a new job, we pray for that too. If they need to strengthen their marriage with love, we pray for that too, dear Heavenly Father. If they're missing a loved one that has gone to the by and by, Lord, we pray for them too, dear Heavenly Father. And dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you make our church a church that recognize its authority in your kingdom. In Jesus Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, everybody stand for the benediction, all right? And go be church, be Jesus, right? Because he's with you, and now, and now, and now. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you that peace, that peace that passes all understanding. And may he give you that faith like that of the woman who reached out and touched, that faith that is unshakable, hope that is unsinkable, and love that is unquenchable. The Lord loves you. God loves you, and I do too. Amen. Amen.